Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the channel that gets you GIS chops. Today we're going to talk about clustering. With the release of ArcGIS Pro 2.9, Esri added the ability to cluster points. I downloaded this point layer from the National Park Service. It's their points of interest layer. And you can now cluster your point layers by going to the Appearance tab, hitting Aggregation, and Clustering. And that's going to cluster all those points into groups. And notice also we get this clustering tab up here at the top. And when I did activate the clustering, what it did is it took my current symbol and just expanded it to fit the size of the cluster. So it just changed the size of the symbol depending on how many points are grouped together. And then it labels it with the number of points inside that cluster. If you zoom in and out, it'll change. And that setting is controlled by... And that setting is controlled by this clustering radius. The larger clustering radius, the fewer clusters you will have because they span a wider area. Then if you change it to lower, you'll have more points, more clusters, because the area that it's grabbing those points is smaller. We also have this scale threshold, which is you tell it what scale you want to turn off those clusters and just have those points displayed. So if I set it to 1 to 24,000, then start zooming in. Might take me a while to get into 1 to 24,000. And still clustering. There we go. We're at 12,000. So those clusters are turned off. If I set it lower to 1,000, it'll turn the clusters back on. So that scale threshold is the scale at which you want the clustering to be turned off. They've also given you control of the symbology for the clustering. Like you can change it to unclassed colors, which is going to make uh, larger clusters darker and smaller clusters lighter. Uh, we'll go back to just regular. But since we opened up that symbology pane, you notice there's a cluster settings tab now. It gives you the same clustering radius setting that you can adjust here gives you a field to label them with. It lets you label them by point count or it lets you put an arcade expression in this expression builder. You also have control over the label symbology. You can either take one of their presets or you can come in here and format the text symbol yourself. Change the color, So you have a lot of flexibility on how these clusters are displayed with both the symbology and the label. Pretty much as a regular layer, you can symbolize it however you want with all the options that they give you for a regular layer. You can also publish a cluster layer to ArcGIS Online now, and it will carry this clustering over to ArcGIS Online. They also give us this summary statistics which lets you perform statistics on numbers, and I've only got one number field, so we'll just take the average of the object ID and see what that does. So what that summary statistics did was it created another field. When you now explore this or identify this, it gives you the point count in the cluster and the mean of the object IDs in that cluster. So that's what the summary statistics does gives you all sorts of options, some mean, minimum, maximum, standard deviation, and mode. So there's a bit of a crash course in clustering. If that helped you out, go down and give that like button a quick chop for me. Share this with your friends, and then watch this video about what else is new in ArcGIS Pro 2.9. We'll catch you next time. Give it a halo so that everybody will yell. All those cartographers that hate halos out there. There we go. Makes it totally unreadable. <laughs>